Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to our viewers and listeners to another episode of Journeys of Not So Ordinary People podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Dr. Dave Peltz, and our other co-host is Dr. Joe Hamlet. How are you doing today, Joe? Yeah, man, I am doing very well. It's uh, <laughs> great. Uh, great to see you again, as always. I'm just excited to be here. That's awesome. I love your, I love your voice. It's kind of like, today we're going to discuss a <laughs> wonderful topic. It's very uh, relaxing and enthralling. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is so, fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So today's topic is going to be customer service. Whoopsie. There's a uh, rule number one, put your cell phone <laughs> you on mute that I did not follow it. <laughs> yeah, it happens to the best of us. All oh. right. So our today's topic is customer service. And what does that mean? What does it look like? And uh, with, with customer service, we're going to tack on good customer service and, and poor customer service to understand what that looks like. And the same for providing a product, a good product versus kind of a poor product and some of the pros and cons to that. So we're going to focus a little bit more on the, on the positive side of things, but we're going to talk about customer service and products and uh, the significance behind that. So Dr. Joe, what are your thoughts on customer <laughs> service? So I can tell you a lot of stories about <laughs> poor customer service, <laughs> right. uh, but that's not where we want to start. Yeah, but, yeah. but, you know, customer service, it, it's funny because, uh, you know, years ago, you thought when you thought of customer service, you really thought about, you know, that service that you were provided or products that you were provided, you know, standing in a line at a store, grocery store, or department store. And, and, you know, having to go over to customer service, though, so that's, you know, how you really used to think of customer service. And, and, you know, as you know, that has definitely changed. Yeah. You know, a lot of times in organizations, we refer to our, uh, you know, the entities within our organizations as customers mm -hmm. uh, and then external as customers, just because it's all about providing um excellent service, uh, good service so that people want to continue to come back. And so, you know, like, like I said, years ago as a kid, or even as a young adult, it, it was all in reference to um, businesses and companies and things like that. You write a bad review and things like that. But today, like I say, it's more about internal customers, people that you work with every day. And it's kind of funny to say that, but they are your customers, uh, like I say, internal and external. So I, that's one of the things that I have been focusing on and all the roles that I've had, especially in the last 10 to 15 years, is that everyone is a customer uh, and you're someone else's customer. So that's the way I approach it. That's the way I view it. So when I think of like I referred to at the very beginning, poor customer service is because I have been involved in those types of situations um, where, you know, I've provided good service or good customer service and somebody on the other side has not done the same thing. Right. And, and I think mainly because I understand that now, you, you know, I understand the idea of customer service, good customer service, because that's the way I view every relationship I go into that, that it is, um, every an interaction, uh, of some kind. And so it's easy to be your best when you view it as somebody's going to give you some type of review on the other side. So I want to make sure that if my name gets passed down the road, that it's going to be because of good service, not because I was the person that didn't provide good service. And right. that, that's the approach that I take with you know, internal projects, external projects, meeting people. I just always view people as a customer now, you know, not that they're going to pay me anything, but just that relations building thing that we treat people the way we want to be treated. And that's, that's why it's really a lot of times hard for people to wrap their head around it because they're thinking in terms of big box stores and things like that, that you provided me a service or you sold me something but it's much bigger than that, you know, as I've been saying. So that's why I think it's a little challenging for people to get that concept because I think their minds are still telling them the only way uh, they can be a customer or I can be a customer is if I buy something or if I, you know, use their product or their service. And so that's, that's why I think it's a challenge for a lot of people to really understand that concept, concept mm -hmm. of, of good service. So I, I'm going to, 
pause right here because it looks like you're itching to say something. Uh, <laughs> so I'll hand it back off to you. Yeah, Joe, you brought up some great points. I like the fact that you said that you treat everyone as a customer. <clears throat> and that does put a different perspective and spin on things and a different mindset when you do that. And to your point, you know, we have our external customers, like if we're providing the service, maybe it's a client or, you know, someone that we're going to paint their house, that's a cust they would be a customer. Right. But to your point, there's also the internal customers within the company. It could be another department. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be the human resources or the finance department it could be a completely you know, if that's a small company, if it's a big company, it might be a separate organization like the HR organization right. or the supply yep. chain yep. organization or the engineering uh, uh, organization. So within those organizations and departments, you have your, your, your customers. You can have the managers, the directors, the line staff, yep. you know, people doing the, uh, the regular, the regular work, I'll say. So, right. you know, it's, there are many different types of customers. And then on the flip side of that, we then become a customer because as we mm -hmm. help them, they're being, them being our customers, when they help us, we then become their customers. So if we put this into perspective, kind of like um, going out to eat, you know, we expect good customer service from our servers and mm -hmm. the people who seat us. On the flip side, if they're treating us well and doing their job well, they expect us to provide right. a reciprocated good customer service yep. and feedback for them by not being jerks to them just because they're, they might be having a little bit of an off day. Everyone has an off day and a bad right. day, life happens, but that doesn't give us permission to treat people like garbage right off the right. bat. Right. We shouldn't treat them like garbage anyways. We should treat them all with respect, but, you know, just, you know, if, if you set your, the water in front of me and it spills a little bit, not a big deal, but some people will really get upset by that and make a big ordeal out of it instead of just understanding it was an inadvertent accident. Now, if they take that glass of water and they throw it in your face, that's a completely different right, story. Right, so right. we have to understand that good customer service and customer service is a reciprocal relationship. Absolutely. You know? Um, and along well, and, and you just said that you just said the key word relationship that yeah. that's really what it is it, it like i said it still comes down to forming those relationships yeah. and um, maintaining them right uh, again to if it, it, you really think of it in terms of if you have a close family member or friend uh and treating them you know you wouldn't treat them any kind of way or, or like say throw water in their face so I, that's what i really consider it or mm -hmm. liken it to when i'm thinking about customer service and i'll just i'll just kind of illustrate how um having poor customer service or building uh, building a poor relationship right off the bat can come back to haunt you so this particular situation um when i was a senior leader in the military very, very last couple of years of my you know time you know the military has the rank structure they have the enlisted side and they have the officer side well i we, we gathered for a, a huge meeting or a huge uh, you know understanding yeah, of, yeah. of something going on and you know i met a, a a captain and this individual you know they were an officer for one even though i was an e9 you know highest enlisted rank you could achieve i could tell uh, you know, she still had treated me or looked at me as, as still lower than her because she was an officer and I was an enlisted. And so that was really how she, she came off, uh, you know, the initial meeting we had, it was just like, I did not matter to her. And, and so I took it as, okay, I, you know, she, she doesn't want to, you know, be a good customer. I, you know, I'll leave it at that. So walk away from that meeting hours later when we come back together and now we're in a setting where you know senior senior leaders uh, are all in this room and it's a typical boardroom with a large table with 12 seats at the big table and then surrounding the room was other chairs that were up against the wall so me new to this whole situation i sat in one of the chairs and when the general's aide came in and said hey chief hamlet what are you doing sitting back there uh, you should be sitting at the table. So while I was sitting around this table, two chairs down was that same captain. And I just happened when, when 
the the major said this to me he said uh, you know when i, I kind of took looked over to the left at this captain and i could see the look on her face like oh wow i did not realize this is who he was and so it was really funny um when i set up at the table and she sat back at the back row basically mm -hmm. and then when she came to do her brief she basically gave her brief and walked out so it, it was just again you know she treated me like i was nobody um you know and and then she realized that i carried much more stature than she did so just you know that that's the one thing i've learned over the years that you in any situation you don't treat people less than because you never know uh, at the end of the day where you may see them right, they right. may be and you may be wind up working for them or they may wind exactly, up working for you exactly exactly that was really where i was going with this is that you don't know uh, even people when you're driving down the road and, and they flip you off and, and you know you, you want to say something and then you get to your destination and that's the that's the speaker or that's the person you're supposed right, to right. you know so it, it just you don't know it's your new boss <laughs> yeah exactly i mean literally so so that's why I really that that just reminded me of that you know not being cordial to people not reciprocating like you say that customer service or good customer service at the end of the day what does that look like and then yeah. how could that affect your potential future you know that's, so that's a great uh, example joe um you know and and as service and product providers we can look at it this way and i'm going to use like a, a a simplified analogy um if you have someone come paint your house and, or let's say me i come and paint your house not that i would but well for you joe i would okay, okay. All right. so i paint your house but it's all streaked and it the color isn't <laughs> even and i say okay i want my payment and i demand payment you're going to be upset because it's not it, the the quality of the work was not acceptable. It was obviously right. not a good job. So right. for me, not only did I demand payment, but I did I did a I, my the quality of my workmanship was poor. So I provided a poor product and poor customer service. What does that? How does that reflect on me and potential business that you could bring to me? Right. You know, so the, the point to that is if you're providing a service and or a product, provide a quality service and a quality product, you know, because it will reflect on you as an individual and as a Absolutely. business owner, as an employee, as a supervisor, as a leader, all those things matter. And on the other side, if we're the recipient of this poor product and service, we should, um, I'm going to say, and I'm going to use the word gracious, gracious enough to tactfully and respectfully have a conversation. Right. You know, maybe, maybe I was having an off day. Maybe, you know, I ran out of paint. Maybe I ran out of time. You know, there could be a million reasons. There could be family issues, medical issues. It could have been, it could have been not my issue aside right. from demanding right. payment. Maybe the quality of paint I purchased was subpar for some reason. Maybe I got a bad batch or whatever. So right. there's lots of reasons things can go askew, but the important thing is we need to politely and respectfully address it to understand. And if I'm still being a jerk to you, Joe, well, then, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And then we, you know, and, and cut losses probably. So, but there is, there has to be that understanding that, you know, just because you're providing a service or a product, it's not my way or take it or leave it. It's, you know, I have to understand you as my customer. What are your needs? What are your expectations? What did we come to terms on? Are we on the same page? Because my definition of quality may be drastically different from your definition of quality. And my definition of customer service may be drastically different than yours. So it really is, it gets back to the relationship word and having that discussion, having discussion and having those conversations that, that can be a little awkward sometimes as a conversation and not just a, you know, a, a bantering or, you know, a, a bullying or a beating up event, you know, to say, oh, well, you did a bad job. I'm never referring to you, you to anyone else. Well, that's fine. But what's the real issue here? You know, let's talk about it instead of yelling and screaming. So, so to, you, to your point back, you, you know, I'll go back a little bit where you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe uh, re referrals and things like that. 
So we've we've touched on networking, you know, in a previous episode, probably uh, months ago. But to that point and to where we are in this day and age, um, a lot of times you, you get work because referrals. So the, the scenario you just said that, you know, you, you demand money and you don't um, want to come to terms with what's really going on. You know, how, how is now people going to refer when they come, when your name comes up at, as a painter, what, what's, what's the terms that are going to be coming out of their mouth? Probably not favorable. And so if we think in terms of that, you're basically, you're really on, on a, in an audition, uh, every time you do provide or a service interview, or yeah. product, yeah, an interview. So again, when, when your name comes up and I always think about this, when we, we go back to branding, yep. you know, one of the things that when you're not around, when you walk out of the room and, and your name comes up, what's said about you, yeah. you know, are they going to say, Dave, Dave, don't ever ask Dave to paint your house because he it's not going to come out well, right? Or are they, are they going to say, wow, man, even though things didn't go well, he, he was really willing to work and we, we got it all figured out. Yeah. You know, so, so you know, even if the, if the situation wasn't good, to what you said earlier about figuring out why and, and then, you know, building from that, because like you said, everybody has bad days and, and, you know, it may have been out of your control, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the mixtures or whatever could have affected this. And so being able to work through that, uh, it, it's going to still get you a lot further than just being hesitant or resistant because it could be future clients that you're going to lose because of it. So I really, uh, you know, if you think in terms of the networking piece, the relationship building piece, uh, again, referrals, how does that all occur? And it, it's because, you know, somebody's, even if you, things didn't work out, you're still were able, were able to work it out um, to make it pleasurable for both parties. And, and that's really, it comes down to good customer service, trying to figure out how it's going to benefit both of you. Right. And I, and, and back to my original point, when I said, Hey, you, you have to go into this with a customer service mindset always. And, and, and it's kind of funny, like I say, to think about that, even me talking about it and referring to it that way, it still just kind of throws me, you know, to the side, like, man, what, what am I, who am I? Did I, that there there's customer service related to this. And so, mm -hmm. you know, like, again, I think that really still just, um, paralyzes people when they think about customer service. It's always still thinking about, you know, I went to the dentist. Did they do a good job? If they did, I'm going to spread their name around. If they didn't, I'm, I'm not. So it just, all the interactions we have really is still a customer service relationship. It yeah. Really and I, and I like that. where you're going with this because it gets back to you're providing a service or product how is your customer service? But as a customer, how is your customer service to the person providing that service right, or product? Right. That's just as important because how you treat them is going to have an impact on how they treat you and vice versa. Right. So, you know, think about this. How many of us go to the same grocery stores or same food stores, food and grocery store, I guess it's the same thing, but you know, your big box stores <laughs> right, or yeah. the mechanics or, or, you know, auto shops to get your oil changed, um, frequent the same uh, facilities, maybe it's a sports park or something like that. You know, if, if you frequent those places, how, how do you think you're going to be remembered if you always come in and are complaining about what's going right, on, right. you know, versus, you know, having a positive attitude and being gracious and grateful for what they are providing. Mm -hmm. and if you don't like it after a few times, then don't go back. Right, and if it's right. your only option, well, then there's an opportunity to, you know, have a discussion as awkward as it might be. And it may not result in much, but at least you've made an effort. So that's right. something to think about. You know, we are not only are we customers, but as customers, we provide customer service and how right. we receive and reciprocate. So it really does. It gets back to, again, that relationship, relationship building, networking, branding, right. representing yourself. The, mm -hmm. the discussions that we've talked about over the many episodes that we've done, you know, all these pieces 
you know, start coming together. One of our episodes, I believe we did kind of a summary and kind of showed how mm. things fit together. Right. Well, this is an extension. You know, our conversations mm -hmm. are extensions upon previous conversations where it's not just one thing and it's isolated and siloed. It's, it's, it's more of a web, a network right. of things that were, it may be only a piece of this, but that piece is important, or maybe it's a large piece of it. Right. So, right. you know, with customer service, there's a lot more to it than just receiving something you know well, well you know that's funny you bring up you know the whole scenario about the grocery store because and you you know this about my wife but she's you know heavy into savings and saving money and couponing and things she's like that yeah so <laughs> uh, for a period of time when she would take her tupperware uh container full of coupons and so when she would walk in the store, because like you said, she would freaking with these stores, you know, once a week, she had a routine, she'd go into all these stores, same day, same time, because she knew the routine. Well, when she would walk in, the first thing that cashiers would say, well, there's the coupon lady. So back to your point about branding and, and who, what you're known for, yeah. and how you treat people, and you know, that interaction you have with them when they would see her, they would smile and laugh, um, and which was a great thing because, you know, she's going to hand out 25 coupons. So, uh, so uh, to your point about being a good customer, she would tell the people behind her, Hey, I'm going to be a while. Cause I'm going to be handing out these coupons. So you might want to get in a different line. So to, to exactly to your point, you know, her being a, uh, you know, customer, to the grocery store but then also showing good customer service by telling the people behind her hey you're going to be here for a minute so if you're in a hurry uh you might want to change lanes or something so you know it, it's again it, you know the branding piece that you're talking about the good customer service as a customer and then as a customer providing a service to somebody else by telling them hey if you don't have a few extra minutes you might want to move on so that i think that's a really the good example of you know her being the coupon lady uh, being coined the coupon lady but then also providing a service to other people she didn't work there she could have just stayed in line just like everybody else just you know and why and why you watch the people behind her look at their watch and say man you know so she did them a service as well so i you know yeah. that's why i say she's taught me probably more about customer service than anybody you know even the point or the fact that you know, we get a bill and we don't agree with it. She'll call that, the you know, the customer service line and say, hey, I, I think there's a mistake on our bill. Uh, can we go through this? And, you know, a lot of times after she gets off the phone, uh, they've either cut whatever the discrepancy was or they, they offer us some other service, you know, at a discounted rate. And it's because, you know, there was a mistake. Kind of what you were saying earlier about the, the painted house, there was a mistake. Um, she worked with the customer service person and they helped us, helped her figure out. And it was, you know, a, a reciprocative, uh, you know, discussion and both parties got something from this. And so yeah. she's, she's, you know, taught me a lot about customer service because she knows she's in that environment where, like I said, if people are having a bad day, it's easy to go off on the uh, cashiers or the person in front of you or behind you. So she's really uh, taught me a lot about, you know, customer service. So yeah, those are great points, Joe. And I really like how you um, pulled that thread and extended the, the discussion a little bit uh, about that example, about being in a grocery store, because it is something that we all do, mm -hmm. you know, and we all have heard the story about uh, the, the analogies or the, I guess, yeah where, you know, if you have a bad experience, you're going to tell more people than if you have right. a good experience yeah. with a company or product. Well, that's one side of it, right? If, mm -hmm. if I do a great job, you're going to refer me. And if I do a bad job, you're not right. going to refer yep. me. But as the service provider or the product provider, if we're working with a consumer who's just not nice or good to work with, right. are we going to work with them again? Now, me as that consumer, I might be going wow, I've got a great deal and they've got a great product. I really like the way they painted my house, but how come they won't come work for me anymore? You know, I'm paying them well. I gave them mm -hmm. great tips. Right, you know, I, right. I got all their services and I want to do more, but they don't call me back and they don't work with me. Well, if you treat your service providers and your product providers poorly, 
you provide them poor customer service, you're not going to get the opportunity or you may not have the opportunity to receive their services and products anymore. So it really does run both ways because if I, if I have a client or if I'm providing a service or product to someone and they are the worst client or worst person or worst customer to work with, I'm going to work with them as little as possible because right. I did not right. have a good experience. Right. You know, the customer service as a customer from them to me was not good. And I'm not right. going to go back. I mean, they right. may have, you know, they may have paid me well, but it's just not worth the, the stress and heartache and frustration to deal with something like right. that. And I've, yep. I've met people like that. Oh, absolutely. And then conversely, you know, you, again, we have those people that are, you know, they're really nice. They provide great customer service, but their product is poor. Right. right. You know, so it's, it, you know, there's a lot of different pieces to consider, you know, um, one of the, uh, one well, of the anecdotes I like to share, and, and again, this is just my preference, not all the time, please, right, for right. those service and product providers, do not take this as a rule of Dave. Um, but there are certain circumstances where I would rather have a poor bedside manner and a great product or service. Meaning if, if I go to a mechanic and let's say they're not, they don't provide the best customer service, it's just kind of okay, borderline, maybe... I'll come back to them or not, but they do a great job and their prices are great on my car. I'm going to come back to them. Same with a right. surgeon or a, or a physician or medical staff. You know, maybe they're not the best at customer service, but what they do professionally so far right. as my healthcare right. is yeah. exceptional. Yeah, I, You know, that's that give and take. Whereas us as the, as the consumer need to understand what's acceptable to us and what's not. Now, right. conversely, if you're that provider, that service or product provider, that's an opportunity for you to, to take a look at things and make yourself better. Because just because right. they're paying you and they seem happy and grateful because you provide this awesome service, but your customer service skills aren't the best. Think of how much more you could be receiving, how much oh, more absolutely. business, right. how much yep. more income, how many more customers you could be helping if you polish your customer service. Uh, right. tools, uh, tool skills. So, you know, there's a lot to be understood and gained about customer service. It's not just me going to Joe and saying, wow, you did a great job or no, you didn't do a great job. I'm telling people, I'm not telling people about you. And that's it. It's, it's, it really does get back to that reciprocal relationship, right? Right. You know, because we all have our great days. We all have our bad days and it's just, and is what it is. It's how we as individuals respond to that on either side of that coin. Right. You know, sometimes just having, being understanding to a person that's having a bad day is all that person needs. We've heard right. the anecdotes of, you know, hey, just smile at someone or just say good afternoon or a polite greeting can yep. make or change a, pers a person's entire life yep. or outlook in that moment because you don't know what they're going through. Right. Um, and, you know, yeah. Well, and, and that, that's a, a a perfect example of, you know, again, going back to that relationship piece, yeah. uh, you know, people that are people leaders and, and they struggle with um, building that relationship with their employees. And, and to that point, if you know them, built that relationship with them, you're going to understand when they're down, when they're having problems and things like you're going to be maybe not totally under you know see it every time but you you'll probably be better equipped to see it when when things change or when things occur and again that goes back to that customer service piece how do you improve that relationship it's it's or that customer service piece uh, is is getting to know them and and you like you said sometimes all they need is a you know good morning or or smile and say hey how's your day i learned that from you know again being a senior leader in the military one of the, the most common things we heard from younger airmen you know first term second term airmen which mean they were probably you know in their early 20s uh, mid 20s and the, the one comment that you heard most often was um they are so excited when a senior leader is walking down the hall and they, and that senior leader says, Hey, how are you doing? How's your day? They, they, that moment, most yeah. of them would, would prefer to have something like that versus 
getting coined in a ceremony or an award, they, you know, equate that to you seeing me, uh, that I'm present, you're not too busy for me. And again, that's okay. another form of customer service. You're and at this we've, level. We've all seen that at some level or not walking down the hall and there's right. our senior leaders or our supervisors or managers, right. teammates, colleagues, peers, yeah. whatever, even customers. And you're looking at them and you're going to give them a polite greeting. And they're just like, right. they look yeah. right past you, right or, they past just, you. Yeah. or they don't see you at all yeah. or acknowledge you. And you're like, Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. And they're just like, they look at you like, right. why are you talking to me? And right. it's like, you know, we're collectively, we're all on the same team, you know? Right. So we, it gets back to, you know, you don't know their story. You don't know what the, the shoes that they've walked, the life that they lived, their, their situation as positive or poor as it could be, you know, and that's, and that's just where providing good customer service at, to your point, adopting that perspective of providing yeah. good customer service all the time right. really is a benefit because it puts you in a positive mindset and it allows you to take those moments for what they are. And maybe you do say good morning or good afternoon to someone and they don't see or acknowledge you. Right. That's okay. Because right, maybe exactly. there's something going yeah. on exactly. that you that you do not know about and probably you shouldn't know about right. that they're dealing with. So right. in the last few minutes, Dr. Joe, uh, any final uh, words of wisdom or insights that we can glean? So you just summed it up. I think like, like for me again, um, my approach is, is like you said, that, that I treat everybody as a customer. Like I say, I know it's hard to think or to wrap your mind around it sometimes, but that that's really the approach we should take. Because again, if you put yourself in somebody's other in their place, if you're the janitor to just mop the floor and then people track all through it, like they don't see you. Uh, mm -hmm. you know would you want to be having to mop remop the floor again because right. people are not considerate so i mean it just it, if you really look at it that way that you you treat people the way that you want to be treated that's customer service that right. really is because again if you think in terms of me going to a box store and i have a problem who am i going to go to i'm going to go to customer service do i want somebody that's going to be on the other side defensive and you know or vice versa, you want someone, or, co someone coming up to you that's just uber aggressive. Right. So, so I, again, it, it just really goes back to, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Um, you know, Dave said it, people, you don't know what people are going through. So you make that attempt. And if it doesn't stick, that's fine. But you don't change your who, what, you know, who you are or the approach you take because mm -hmm. of someone else is having a bad day. So relationship building, uh, treat people as you like to be treated. And, and like I say, just embrace this customer service theme. That That's what it is. I mean, because it relates to your networking ability, your branding, who you are, who you want to be remembered for. That all comes into play when you really think about customer service. So, Joe, those were very excellent points. What a wonderful summary. I appreciate that. Um, to our viewers and listeners, we want to take a moment out to thank you again for tuning in and listening in and viewing. Uh, we appreciate your uh, participation on the other side of the, the camera. Um, please, if you're enjoying the shows, like and share. Um, that's what we're here for is to help and just have a great conversation yeah. with each other and, and, and you, our audience. So on that note, um, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, keep on being your not so ordinary you.